Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. On today's video, we are going to be looking at the brand new Revelo. Now, if you guys recall, I reviewed my very first Revelo on this channel not too long ago. It was the Hex Mariner, which I still have one in my collection. And it was a very different version, you know, to the normal Submariner homages that we see. Uh, and in short, very well made watch, specced out to the nines. And ever since then, I've been looking forward to the latest release. Uh, which is what I have in hand. So let's take out the box. In terms of packaging, pretty much exactly the same as the previous watch. Uh, same style box, obviously different contents. Uh, so what we do have here is the brand new model. This is called the R10 Admiral GMT. Um, and instantly in hand, looking at some of the design cues used, uh, looking at some of the details on the dial and the bezel, the watch is very much out there. Uh, and they use similar design language to the Zelos Hammerhead for this particular one, I believe anyway. This very large and angled case, some of these details, this larger bezel, the knurling present, uh, and the bracelet looks absolutely badass as well. Uh, so there's definitely a lot going on, very different to the previous release, um, that Hex Mariner R10. Um, but you know you can see still similar design cues now with Revelo one of the inspirations they have to I think all the models is that they are based on military spec vehicles um, and this one is no different this is named or designed after a particular type of combat ship now the way that inspiration from that combat ship shows itself on this watch uh, is in the last place you'd probably look or I've never seen it on this place so let me zoom in first and foremost and show you where that inspiration actually shows itself on this Admiral GMT so, so if you look a bit closer at the handset you'll see um, it's a very strange shape quite broad uh, you've got a brushing in the center you've got these beveled edges which are highly polished but it actually resembles um, the bird's eye view of a ship uh, and this is where that inspiration is not only that that chapter ring that you see this design uh, is actually loomed we'll see the loom shot a bit later on and that is meant to reflect uh, you know the ship's radar so that inspiration has been you know clearly kind of put out into this watch and and you see that from Revelar as a brand uh, they do like to definitely get the design out there uh, that design language you know everything that they use is you know purposeful uh, and it's good to see a clear cut kind of design idea gone into the watch so this watch, let's talk a little bit more about it in terms of uh, the technical aspects, specs, dimensions, etc. And because this is a prototype model, um, you know, I'm going to give you all the pre-release and early bird pricings before continuing to the review. And that's all that important information. So let's get that out of the way first and foremost. Specs wise, usual specifications, sapphire crystal, 316 L stainless steel construction on the case and bracelet. It does have 200 meters of water resistance with a screw down case back and a screw down crown. Uh, ceramic bezel insert, which is loomed, uh, 120 click unidirectional bezel. And this movement used is of course the Seiko NH34 Caller or Traveler GMT. Uh, and that NH34 is exactly the same in terms of the way it runs to the NH35 or NH36. So it's exact same beat rate, reliability and accuracy. So moving on to dimensions. Yes, they are quite large, but not as large as you'd probably expect. Uh, the case diameter is only 41 and a half millimeters. Overall case thickness is 13.5 millimeters. A log to log of 48.5 millimeters. Uh, a log width of 22 mil. The bracelet does taper down to 20 and you'll notice with the flat end links the log slug does not grow any further it stays at 48 and a half so i think dimensionally it's okay uh one of the larger watches that we looked at the overall weight is around 200 grams with that bracelet uh now you also get a silicon strap so i have that in this packaging um with the revelor branding and i think with the strap it's around 150 grams so 50 grams just on that bracelet so let's talk about prices while we're here so on the early bird the first 100 watches or the first 100 customers get this at 279 dollars um the launch price is 339 and the normal price is 379 so on that 400 dollars for a seiko n34 it's not bad, uh, in all honesty. Um, if you look at some of the specs on offer, um, some of the designs here, you know, it, this is a big chunk of metal. And also, they've got the new updated clasp, which I didn't mention. Uh, and this updated clasp also has a on-the-fly adjustment, uh, sort of a ratchet-style adjustment. So if you pull down that tab, slides up. Let me give you an example there. Uh, and we're starting to see... You know a lot of micro brands and um, some brands from aliexpress even looking at 
uh, newer clasps trying to get all these on the fly adjustments into some clasps now a uh, very reasonable price point so that's always good to see so now that we've got all that information out of the way let's actually look a little bit closer at the watch and let's see what we have here now please bear in mind uh, as i've been informed by uh, revelo that this is indeed a prototype model so you might have a couple of qc issues misalignments dust on dial etc um, which is what you kind of find on prototype models now we've also got a list of things they will improve on the full production uh, model as well so please stay tuned so you can catch that at the end of the video so First and foremost, in terms of color options, well, this has a lot of color options, uh, no different to the previous releases. So I'm just going to show them to you on screen, uh, which is on their website. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you've got your general colors and you've got some really special additions like the meteorite dials and stuff. And for the most part, I think all the colors do look quite good. Uh, and what most of the dials have in common is that they've got this gorgeous whirlpool design uh, with a bit of sun ray in there. So it gives you just so many different uh, shading effects uh, the way that light reflects off this dial is very unique and depending on the color combination you go for it's going to look awesome you can really see how deep and detailed that whirlpool design is um, and that is a cracking dial heavily detailed uh, and it does give a very nice effect i mean considering the watch is inspired obviously by a ship uh, and it's a diver as well so it definitely does give off the appearance of waves uh, and I really love that sunburst effect because it just adds another kind of dimension to that dial. Now the dial also has some printing on there. You've got Revelo just below the 12 and above the 6 you've got Admiral GMT automatic 200 meters. Now the Admiral GMT text is in red which matches up nicely with that red arrow tip which is that GMT hand. Uh, and as I already mentioned, the handset on this watch is incredibly detailed. Uh, I missed it at first. I just thought they were a weird handset. But as soon as I noticed that it's actually off the ship, uh, it made much more sense. And it just made them look that much more cooler. Now, you'll notice the chapter ring is where the GMT markings are. So the 24 hour uh, markings are on the inside of that watch. Uh, and they want you to do that to declutter the dial. And I think it's a right choice. You know, if you're going to have a rehort area anyway, use the chapter ring and put the 24 hour markers in there. Now, looking at that bezel, I believe the inset is a matte ceramic bezel. Um, I don't know if they've got different options depending on the different colors, whether it's polished or that glossy ceramic, but this one is definitely brushed and in a matte effect, uh, which is always nice to see. Uh, takes away from that overly glossy ceramic insert that we don't like all the time nice markings on there and this is fully loomed so i really want to see how that loom looks uh, which we'll have a look after this bezel section um, the bezel rotation is 120 click and it's it's fine right it's somewhere in the middle um it's quite normal the bezel rotational feeling is nothing you know super smooth uh and it's neither too harsh it's actually as i said just kind of somewhere in the middle you can feel all the clicks tactile enough Great resistance on there. Uh, the nailing on the bezel is spot on. I really do like this kind of weight bar nailing. Um, gives you a really good grip of that bezel. Uh, this one is slightly misaligned, um, but they've covered that you know, in that prototype clause. So I'm hoping that the full production models aren't actually misaligned. Uh, yeah, it just kind of goes off to the left slightly. Now, another thing which you might have missed is that date window at the six, it is in black. Um, and they actually are going to change that, but I'm going to hold off on the changes so I can cover them all together at the end of the video, but that's something that's definitely going to change. Uh, I really like the dial, that design, that texture is gorgeous, and if you look at some of the other color options, that only gets better, so I think some of the greens or that molten lava color, that is something which is definitely going to stand out. So now apparently this is meant to be a loom monster, so let's go ahead to the loom section and let's see how bright this loom actually is. So this loom shot has been taken without any UV lamp intervention. And what you can see so far is that the loom on the bezel, it's, it's very bright. Um, and that is overpowering against the dial. The dial is quite dull. Um, you know, that ring around the dial, it's not as bright as the chapter ring, of course. And the handsets are somewhere in the middle. It's all BGW9. Uh, and that's something they really need to improve on because I was expecting a lot more. But fear not, this is something which has been identified and will be improved in the full production models. So moving on to the case, let's have a look at some of the machining present uh, and the angles. So one thing you'll notice is that it is fully brushed. Uh, you've got kind of hairline brushing because you can see all the grain on all the different facets. Um, there's no actual polishing in sight, uh, which is okay because again, it's that tool wash aesthetic, meaning you'll kind of protect the watch from all those slight micro scratches. Um, the watch itself has been machined really well. There's no sharp edges. All those facets are nice and smooth. Um, very clean line as well you can see every single 
different aspect um, and yeah fully brushed all the way across um, that crown I like how that crown sits snugly inside that case and the crown action is great great knurling and you've also got the rebel logo there um, and that knurling obviously matching the knurling on the bezel a very nice touch there uh, if you turn the watch around you'll find a screw down case back uh, with the Revlo logo and the normal specifications that you find on case backs uh, the case shape is a cushion style oval style shape but obviously it's heavily angled and this is where i think uh, you can definitely see uh, similarities between this and the zealous hammerhead now something quite different about this case is when we look at the logs now it's not your typical setup where you know you've got fitted end links that go into the case they've gone for flat end links um, and that has led them to make this sort of flat surface here uh, flat area just under the log now I don't quite understand that um, because surely if it's meant to be like hidden logs or kind of a shroud there they would have had to extend that quite a bit and then kind of dip the holes a bit lower on the logs so that end link kind of fits into that case um, and therefore giving you in integrated end links uh, which would have given it a really nice seamless finish now the current setup that what they've got is this gap there I'm not a huge fan of this it looks like you know the, the the watch actually came on a different strap or different bracelet and this is like something aftermarket which has just you know been placed in i've never been a fan of the gaps between watch cases and bracelets and especially not a dive watch and especially the kind of this day and age where everyone's giving us you know fitted end links so i don't really know what's up with that now in terms of the bracelet um it is made really well you've got some very nice brushing on there it's all solid solid links and uh, you do however have split pins which hold uh, these individual links in place it is a five link design uh, again faceted uh, all the way across brushed nicely yeah, very nice to touch very nice in appearance uh, and smooth as well it's not doesn't have any overly sharp edges um, but just the concern for me is just the end link situation the taper is minimal it's 22 millimeters down to 20 millimeters at the base um, the clasp as I briefly mentioned in the start of the video you've got your Revolo branding across there um, it's a twin pusher clasp no flip lock um, but it does kind of stay secure quite well and then of course you've got your on the go adjustment which is definitely a nice touch so in terms of like specifications what you're getting for that let's just say the full rrp of 380 dollars i think it's very well spec i think you're getting a lot for your money um it still is under 400 dollars uh and you know the seiko nh34 was way above uh, as a comparison so you're getting a bracelet with you know features like the, the updated clasp um, you've got great machining nailing present on the watch uh, build quality is awesome that dial is gorgeous um, you know something very big bold out there and something quite different uh, it definitely sits amongst the bigger watches so we're talking it sits with the helms uh, it sits with the zealous as already mentioned uh, and some of those bigger watches that you get out there and in terms of quality i think it kind of sits there as well there's only a few small niggles uh, which brings me to the point about the things that they are going to improve on in their production edition and let me get the press material out here uh, so they are going to change the color of the date wheel and they're going to make it white um, because it's going to be a better match with the loom color and not just look like a hole now i think that's probably a split decision uh, i know a lot of people will prefer a black dyed date wheel but clearly they've had some feedback which wants a white date wheel um, the loom on the dial will be improved yes uh, so the c3 is actually bright enough however on the bgw9 and you kind of get that with bgw9 um, it's quite a lot duller so they're going to add a few extra layers on the bgw9 on the dial and the handset now another thing which they are going to do they've had feedback stating this or suggesting this is that the text just uh, above the six they are going to reduce that in size just ever so slightly um, i don't mind that size i don't think it's overly big so anyway that's something i'm gonna go and do um and then the case back will be 3d embossed rather than etched so i think yeah that's a nice touch something which just looks a bit more substantial i suppose uh, and there will be less gap between the bracelet links now they haven't specified you know the gapping between these links or the gap between the bracelet and the case i would definitely like uh, the gap here to be reduced um, but it, they also need to kind of extend that bit out there like a hood over the end link and that will make look awesome currently I'm not a huge fan i'd rather put it on a silicon bracelet in all honesty um and they also want to soften the bracelet edges for comfort on skin and that's a good 
thing to do because I didn't find it overly edgy. But if they were identified that already, it, they're only going to make it slightly more refined. Uh, and then the clasp etching, they are going to shrink the Revelo name um, or completely eliminate it and just stick to the logo. And I understand that that Revelo is quite large, um, but it's a brand. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't pick that half these things in all honesty. I'm not as picky as some people. But if they kind of reduce that a bit, uh, and I would ask them to kind of finish it a bit better as well because it is slightly rough. Uh, and then that is what the final product would be. Um, give me your thoughts on this, guys. What do you think about this watch? Um, for sure, right? I mean, the color options are awesome. That dial is stunning. I really love that machining on that dial, that heavy detailing present. But in terms of the overall case, uh, the overall fit and finish, what you can see, um, is this something that you guys would be considering? Let me put this on wrist and let's see how it looks before I send you guys off. Here's the Revelo Admiral R10 GMT on my six and a half inch wrist. And it's, yeah, it doesn't seem too oversized. It does seem and fit like a large diver, which is exactly what it is. And 41 and a half millimeters in diameter is, that is appreciated, definitely. And that 48.9 or was it 48.5 log to log uh, definitely fits fine. Um, the only thing I want addressed is that gap there. I don't really like that. I just want that to be a bit more seamless or a bit fitted. Uh, and then I think I would have zero problems with this watch. Uh, the design is definitely big and bold. Um, a lot of things going on actually. That GMT hand, I wish that was just a touch bigger. Uh, it does kind of seem to disappear or sit in the background. I'm surprised they never picked that up when they got the market research. And I think it's a good follow-up model from the Revelo Hex Mariner. Definitely still interested on what this brand can bring. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will see you on the next video.